in R, matrices are always created from vectors. If you want to create a matrix, you use the following notation. Let's say I want to create a 2x3 matrix with the following elements. Then I do X, the assignment, I type matrix, and the matrix function must have at least two arguments. The first argument is always a vector. The C function, with all these numbers inside the parentheses, will create a vector. After the vector, you have a comma, and then you will tell R how many rows you would like the matrix to have. Then R will simply take the numbers in the vector. Since I uh, ask to have two rows, it will use two numbers to fill out the first column. It will go on and create a second column and a third column. After that, it runs out of numbers because it has only six numbers and the matrix is done. In R, it would look like this. I use uh, capital letters for matrices and small letters for vectors. I hit enter and then I ask R to print my matrix X and you can see the difference now between a matrix and a vector in R. From the printout of the object, we can distinguish between matrices and vectors. We see that we get a 2x3 matrix just like we wished and that it has the elements that we would like it to have. So here's another example. Just keep in mind that the first argument to the matrix function must be a vector. And that can be a vector that you have created previously and given a certain name. Or it could be the sequence operator, for example. So one way to create this matrix, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, would be to use x matrix 1 colon 6. 1 colon 6 creates a vector with the numbers 1 through 6. And then I want two rows. Try changing the 2 to a 3 and you will get three rows. In that case, there are enough numbers for two columns, so that will give you a 3 by 2 matrix. The default setting in R is to fill the matrix column by column. So we start by filling the first column, then the second, then the third, and so on. You can ask R to fill row by row instead by using the following command. Matrix 1 colon 6 comma 2 comma by row equal to T, where T is for true. Then it will use the numbers in the vector 1 through 6 and it will fill out row 1 first, 1, 2, 3, and then it will continue on row 2. So here's a useful command if you just want to create a matrix and fill it with some random integers. For example, a 3x3 three three matrix with uh, equally likely random integers between 0 and 9. No mystery here. Matrix floor means that we round downwards. Random numbers, 9 of them between 0 and 10. And because we round downwards, you will never see the number 10, followed by a comma 3. And since my vector has 9 numbers, 3 rows, that will automatically give me 3 columns. And so it will look something like this, which is useful for experimenting with matrices. All the functions that we talked about for uh, vectors can be applied to matrices as well. So for example, if you do sum of a matrix, it just sums every element in the matrix. And you can use the binary operators. And again, if you use the binary operator, the matrices on both sides of, for example, the plus sign must have the same dimension. Or it's perfectly okay to do a number on one side. If you have a matrix plus two, for example, and then it just simply adds 2 to every element of the matrix. Keep in mind that multiplication in R is element by element. So if I do x times x, it simply squares each element in the matrix. And I get, for example, 25 on the first element, 49, and so on.
if you have done matrix and multiplication before then you know that that's not how we define multiplication between matrices but R simply uses a different symbol to do standard matrix multiplication as we'll see it's percentage multiplication sign percentage sign we often work with diagonal matrices which has a whole bunch of zeros and to save us from entering a whole bunch of zeros there is the function diag in R so if, if I want to create this diagonal matrix I don't have to add all the elements I just simply do diag and to diag I feed a vector and R will simply take the elements of that vector and put it along the diagonal of X there's an even simpler way to create the identity matrix so if I want to create the 3 by 3 identity matrix I can simply type diag parenthesis 3 finally let's consider how to extract elements from a matrix this is very similar to how you extract elements from a vector so let's say that you want the number which is at row column 3 of a matrix X well you use the square parenthesis as before but you need now two numbers the row number followed by the column number if you want to extract an entire row of a matrix you use the notation X 2 comma and nothing following the comma so let's try this let's extract the first row of X using this notation 1 comma you'll see that we get 5 7 and 4 but there is one thing that you should note and that is that this is now a vector this is not a 1 by 3 matrix we see that it's not a 1 by 3 matrix because there is no index above the numbers same thing goes if you want to extract let's say the first column like this again it will give you a vector and not a 3 by 1 matrix if I want it to be a 3 by 1 matrix then I can use the dim function so for example let's assign the first column of X to the symbol X1 X1 is now a vector not a matrix to change X1 into a 3 by 1 matrix or a column vector I use the dim command the dim function so I type dim x1 assign and then I do the dimension inside the vector command so I want it to be 3 by 1 like this and now x1 is a column vector like we want it to be now x1 is a matrix and not a vector so keep this in mind you can extract rows and columns from matrix using this notation row comma or comma column but R will then create a vector and not a row vector or a column vector